Given that cos 17 is equal to k over 5, without using a calculator, determine in terms of k each of the following. I just had a funny vision of, um, I don't know, like, it's not going to be funny, but imagine you very, like, mm, how do I say it? Like, you take everything super seriously, and, like, so when they say without a calculator, okay, no, this isn't funny. It's one of those moments where it was only funny once, but I'm, if I explain it again, okay, I'll try. So imagine you got this person on a test or exam, and it says without using a calculator, so the person like quickly takes a calculator and like just throws it out the window of the classroom or like just throws it, <laughs> I don't know, up, throws it to the whiteboard. I don't know, it wasn't that funny, okay. So without using a calculator, determine in terms of K each of the following. Okay, right, so this is one of those questions where you're gonna draw a triangle, 100% you're gonna draw a triangle. And people are like, so should I do it in the cos quadrant? No. Check here. This is one of those questions where they've given you the angle. 17 degrees. Where is that? Well, we know that this is at 0. This is at 90. This is 180. This is 270, and this is 360. So 17 degrees is quadrant 1, bro. So you're just going to go there. Now, some learners, they forget. Do we go this way, or do we go this way? Well, you're always going to go to the x-axis. There we go. And you're going to pop your little 17 over there. And then this is always 90. And then I would always advise you go work out this angle. Because these teachers, they like to be sneaky little foxes and um, try to throw in some things uh, like related to this number. So we know that 90 minus 17 um, is 73. So this is 73 degrees. Okay, so they can now try their little tricks and we'll catch them. I don't know why I called it a sneaky little fox. I've never used that word before. I think it's because I'm on. I'm trying to be polite because I'm teaching now. But you know what I'd actually say? I'd be like, sometimes these teachers, they want to be a slung. They want to be a slung, my bro. <laughs> so then I decided to say a little fox. Come on, Kevin. What are, this isn't like grade three. Okay, I knew something was wrong when I said that. It felt really weird. It felt really cringy. They're going to be a slung, my bro. They're going to throw the 17 like a slung. Okay, Kev, let's carry on. 6.1.1. <laughs> Calculate sin 17. So, Sokotoa. So, we know that sin is op equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. You could also use the whole X, Y, R method. There's so many different methods. Use whatever's comfortable for you. Um, but, oh, I didn't even go fill anything in. So we know that cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. That means this is going to be k and this is going to be 5. And then we need to go and use um, Pythagoras to go and find um, this missing side over here. So that missing side over there, um, if you eventually go work it out, you should end up with, well, let me show you how I'll do it. You would say 5 squared is equal to k squared plus, uh, let's just call this y for now, so plus y squared. And then 25 is equal to k squared plus y squared. And then, um, cheeky little fox. And then, so then what am I looking for? We're looking for y. Okay, so you're going to say 25 minus k squared equals to y squared. And then to get y alone, you're just going to say square root 25 minus k squared. And that does not become 5 minus k. If some of you are thinking, oh, yeah, but Sue, I just I know the square root and the square root. Okay, that's great but you can't do the square root of this entire piece at once. Okay, so square root 25 minus k squared. Okay, now we can go on to all the questions. So sin 17, so sin is opposite over hypotenuse of the 17 degrees. So that's gonna be opposite, which is the 25 minus k squared, and the hypotenuse is five. Just laughing now, thinking back to when I was in high school. I had a lot of colored friends, and I can just imagine, like, if I had to be studying with them, like, here I am, this white guy, um, busy studying, and let's say I'm sitting next to one of my friends. I remember this one colored guy, his name was Kaywin, um, but he was, like, very colored, and we used to tease each other all the time. Like, he would mock me for being white, and I'd tease him about being colored, but, like, we'd mock each other's ways and stuff. Uh, but it was one of those friendships where it's amazing where there was actually like, we didn't really care about the color, but we teased each other anyways, and it was just amazing. Anyways, I can just imagine studying with that guy and, and being like, wow, okay, when that one really ca caught us, hey? Wow, these, teach <laughs> these teachers are such sly little foxes, aren't they? <laughs> he would probably look at me and be like, bro, 
What do you mean a sly? What do you mean a fox? No, bro. These things are these teachers say these are slangs. These are slangs, me, bro. <laughs> okay, I need to carry on. Um, so. <laughs> 25 uh, I used to love that guy um, Okay, so where are we? 10 of 253 <laughs> I can just imagine this one white guy Studying with like All the colored boys And then he says that in front of them Yeah, That wouldn't go down well, hey Wow, guys, they're really being foxes today, aren't they? <laughs> can you imagine? That they would be like My bro, is this guy for real? Yo, Kevin <laughs> Kevin Okay, 10 of 253. So 253 is larger than 180. So we need to reduce that. Now, remember, the reductions we use either need to fit into the 180 minus, 180 plus, or 360 minus category. If your teacher uses a 270 minus, um, I haven't really done that too often, but I know some learners do do a technique with that. Um, so, yeah. I, I I haven't done enough of that to confidently try. I, I just have always stuck to these three over here. Okay, so we need to realize that 253 is this category over here. So we're going to say that tan of 253 is the same as writing tan of 180 plus 73, because that still gives you 253. And look at that, 73, there they are sneaky fox and so what happens now is that we can write it as tan 73 and we know that tan is also positive in this quadrant some of you are like yeah but kevin aren't we in this quadrant yes we are but just for this part when we are busy writing this part that is quadrant three and tan is positive and so we can now work out tan 73 which is now using this angle as your reference okay and now remember tan is opposite over adjacent, so opposite of the 73. You mustn't go opposite the 17. You're now going to go opposite the 73, which is then k, and the adjacent is square root of that. And there's the answer. And if any of you looked at this one and you thought, like maybe some of you are like super fancy with your maths and you're like, yeah, but sir, how can we leave the answer with the square root in the bottom? Don't we have to like rationalize the denominator? No, you don't, okay? You can just leave the answer like that. Right, this one over here says uh, sin of 124. Uh, 124, okay, so 124 is definitely bigger than 90, so we need to see where it fits over here. It would definitely fit over there, so we would rewrite it as 180 minus. Now, 180 minus 56. Yeah, is it 56? Let me just double check. 180 minus 56. Yes, that gives you 124. And then we know that sin of 180 in the 180 minus, sin is positive in that quadrant. So this just becomes sin 56. Now, I love this because I'm super stuck right now um, because now we got to try to figure out how does this relate to any of these angles? Now, one of the ways I could think of is I know that this and 34 make 90, and I know 34 is double 17. So there could be a double angle something happening over here. So what we could write this as is instead of 56, we could write it as 90 minus 34. And we know from co, this is actually a really good question. From co functions, we know that the sin of 90 minus, you know how we have four different co functions like sin of 90 minus x just becomes cos x, and cos of 90 plus x just becomes. Um, that actually becomes negative sin x. And for example, sin of 90 plus x becomes positive cos x. And there's one other. So if I have sin of 90 minus, then I know that that just becomes cos of that angle. And now we are in, um, it's a good space now because I know that 34 is double 17. And so... I should be thinking about double angle. So let's go get our double angle formulas. And you're pretty much free to use whichever one you like. Um, I'm just going to use the one that has sin because I already know what sin 7, although I also have cos. So yeah, you could use any one you like, to be honest. Um, have fun with it. But I'm going to choose, I'll just choose this middle one. So what that means is that cos of 34 is going to become 2 cos squared of 17 just by using this one over here, minus 1. 
Now cos 34 is then going to be equal to 2. Now what is cos 17? Well cos 17 is k over 5, so I'll just say k over 5, and then it's squared because there we have a square, and then minus 1. And so that's just going to become 2k squared over 25 because, okay let me do that slowly, this part here is going to become k squared over 25. So k squared over 25, and then this 2 was already in the front, so I'm just going to put it like that, and then minus 1.